Ashpin spoke to John about the docks incident, but with the amount of criminals in custody and Roman borderline catatonic. A cat. And most of those grunts were in the hospital was somewhat of a benefit to keep them off the streets. Beacon. Headmaster's office. Linda. The amount of collateral damage was beyond our estimates. Who do you think is gonna pay for that? Magnus snaps and a pile of gold came from the warp and that got both the headmaster and headmistress to clam up. Conrad. You forget that our little nephew is born under the great leader of mankind. We are used to acting with impunity for the sake of saving countless lives. Magnus. A few broken concrete or creates is nothing to sob about. Glinda. Be that as it may, can you please reduce the amount of collateral damage? Magnus. PSHH, that wasn't even our normal amount of. John steps on his armored foot with his own as Magnus didn't flinch, but got the hint. John, I do apologize and I will do better to avoid repeating such a thing. Ashvin, and on the topic of Miss Belladonna. John, I offered her a safe haven to settle her troubles as she has reflected on herself and resolved to be better. Ashvin, if what you say is true then I see no further need to pry. As he knows who she is, and if the issue has been settled, there is no need to dig up any dirt. Conrad, if that is all we should be going now, our nephew has business to tend to. John and his uncles were excused. They went to the school forge. Dimitri, lad, good to have you back. Henry, a lot of the brats left their crap all over the place so they can enjoy the festival. John, well, this is our work and our passion. Dimitri, you're damn right, son. And do these brats appreciate it? No. Nope. I got this gorilla coming in and leaving his nunchuck, staff, for guns. Aw, fuck it, it's shit. What harebrained loon thought it was a good idea to strap guns to nunchucks? Magnus, because they thought it was cool? Dimitri, holy Toledo's who or what is that? Magnus, I'm a pre-march? John explained their lineage a bit, but asked them to keep it confidential until John decides to spill the beans. Henry, Dimitri pinched me. Dimitri gone a step further and slapped him. Dimitri, you're awake, fool, and so am I. They blink dumbly. Dimitri, well, no point in dwelling on it. Like, get back to work. These weapons won't fix themselves. John went to work doing maintenance while... Magnus checked these mecha shit weapons and thought that they were too elaborate and ridiculous at times. Conrad was sharpening his claws. A few hours pass as someone came in looking for John. It was Blake. Blake, John? John. Hey Blake, what brings you here? She handed him a present, but what would be good for an Astartes? It was books about Remnant's history and its fairy tales of ever after. John just smiled that she knew what he had an interest for. Blake, it's not much, but I just wanted to pay you back for the kindness. John, it's good enough besides knowledge is power guard it well. Magnus, I'm so proud of you valuing knowledge, unlike many of my brothers. Conrad was just checking his claws, either ignoring or because his knowledge is more of foresight. John, Either way, I appreciate the gift Blake consider your debt paid. Blake then shifts in position. John, you still have business with me? Blake, I need to maintain Gamble Shroud. John, uh, how may I help you miss? Blake, Gamble Shroud has been blunted a bit and needs sharpening, and I think he needs some upgrades. John, ah, uh, sure, why not? He noticed the ribbon was ragged. John, from what I've seen you employ throwing your weapon as both an added range attack or a distraction as you use this little ribbon. Have you changed it? Blake. Yes, that's my fifth ribbon as some snaps or has been cut by enemies. John. Isn't that dangerous as you will be disarmed? Blake. It would but using my semblance to make up for it, I can stealthily recover my weapon. John. Hmm. I have something that can help with your ribbon issue. Blake, like what? John pulls out some diamonds and thin steel sheets. Blake went wide-eyed. Blake, John, what are you gonna do with those? John, M? These? 
These are nothing to me and to the Imperium. These are just rocks if you ask me. He then took his Astartes gauntlet and then smashed it over an anvil rendering them into powder. He then melted the steel down and then puts it into a mesh mold and dumped the diamond powder and evenly distributing it all over the mesh. He then cuts it and forms it into a long and thin strip as he then lets it cool and solidifies but soft enough to be bent and folded like cloth. Once solid it was so tough that only power weapons are superheated plasma may destroy it. He then took some cloth resembling blakes and then sews it up. It looked like a ribbon but it was a metallic. He then gave it to her as she carefully inspects it. It was really light for its materials but given the paper thin mesh it was tougher than it looks. She attached it to Gamble Shroud and started some practice swings. John asked her to stretch the ribbon as he took a high-grade huntsman weapon and tries to cut the ribbon, but it bounces off. John, there you go, no heavy maintenance needed, but removing it from the cloth and oiling it to avoid it rusting. Blake was just shocked at the craftsmanship. She gave him a hug that surprised the sitting Astartes. John, well, it's Gamble Shroud's turn. He took it and disassembled it and prepares more steel and iron to supplement the weapon's durability. He used the same process as he did for Piraz Milo and made her weapon stronger. Blake, Ruby will be jealous when she hears you improve my weapon. John, sure she will. Don't worry about the pay Blake it comes from the school's budget. Blake, either way thanks. I really wish you were my friend growing up. John, yeah, that would have been nice. She waved goodbye as she leaves with her weapon fully upgraded. John felt something as he looks back at Magnus whispering something to Conrad as they both smile. John, throne help me.